Hello and welcome to today's video. As you could already tell from the thumbnail, today's video revolves around the main antagonist of the Bleach story. Nelson will start crying while looking at the picture. But, but, Tsukishima wasn't the main antagonist of the arc. It was Genjo, you have no idea what you're talking about. Dislike. Calm down please, I know. I chose Tsukishima here instead because first, except for the plot twist at the very end, Tsukishima was the main antagonist of the Fullbring arc. And second, this isn't about the villains as a whole, but a specific analysis of what I think they're supposed to represent in the story, and Tsukishima clearly fits the categorization better. You will soon see why. But before we go any further, spoiler warning! If you haven't watched the latest arc or even the whole series and want to watch it without spoilers, you should leave the video at this point. For everyone else, let's finally get to the topic at hand. I think it's fair to say that Bleach has good antagonists in the story, including one of the most popular in all of manga, Aizen. Aizen, Tsukishima and Yuha manage to capture the viewer's interest in very different ways, challenging our main protagonist Ichigo and forcing him to physically and mentally push himself to the limit and sometimes even beyond. But what makes them so different and how are those differences conducive to the storytelling? Well, Kubo's portrayal is just as simple as it is absolutely brilliant. The villains in question represent, among other things of course, the past, the present and future. And exactly this approach to their characters will now be deepened a little. Tsukishima represents the past, Aizen represents the present and Yuha represents the future. All three of them have aspects of the other two of course, but it's about the focus of their characters that is found in the story. It already shows through their abilities, but is at least as well recognizable in their motives. So let's start with Tsukishima. First of all his skills, particularly his full bring, Book of the End. What does he do? He can turn his bookmark into a katana. Ginju claims that the Book of the End is an extremely powerful sword that can't cut through anything. Tsukishima can cut with the Book of the End in two different ways. One that can injure or kill an opponent and one that can put Tsukishima in the target's past. He is also able to perform both at the same time. However, the matter of inserting his presence is much more complicated than one might think. The path of the one he cuts can be manipulated by the Book of the End. This power works by literally inserting Tsukishima's presence into the victim's history, not by altering time and memories. Yes, I know, this is ridiculously overpowered, but wait, there's more, much more in fact. As a result, Tsukishima is known to the victims as a person who has a strong connection to their personal lives, whether as a relative, friend or lover. He also has the ability to take on the roles of other people in the victim's history. If that wasn't enough, he also learns every detail about his victims' memories, including every little thing about their abilities and consequently every way to counter them. So people have to invent new strategies or abilities on the spot to defeat him, just like Byakuya did. This power still manifests whether or not the victim trusted Tsukishima before being cut. Even after cutting his victims, Tsukishima can still alter their pasts. However, if they come to recognize that their altered pasts are not consistent with reality, they run the risk of a mental breakdown. Since that isn't impressive enough, I guess, Book of the End's power also works on inanimate objects. For example, by cutting the ground he can modify its history to alter its structure and set traps there as though he had done so long ago. So how to stop this overpowered ability? There are basically two ways. First, Tsukishima can undo the effect of his fullbring by cutting an affected person again. Or second, as with all fullbrings, kill the user and all effect of the ability will disappear. I think this pretty much says it all. His entire combat ability is based on the gift of altering the past so that it has a direct effect on the present. Basically, minor reality warping with a detour. Now to his motives. What exactly are Tsukishima's main motives during the fullbring arc? Why is he doing all the things he did to Ichigo except for the fact that he is an absolute sociopath? To make it short and not to go too much into the content of the arcs, he does it to support Ginjo. Because Ginjo saved him as a little boy, took him in and trained him. And out of gratitude to him, he helps him steal Ichigo's powers. In other words, his entire motivation for the things he does is drawn from past events just like his powers. Now to the present and with it to everyone's and my personal favorite, Eisen. Let's start again with the abilities. I think most of you who have clicked on this video know pretty well what he is capable of. That's why I'll try to keep this short. It all starts with his Shikai, which can affect all who see it on activation for their lifetime. Yeah, you heard that right, for their lifetime. As long as Aizen stays alive, that is. Which is forever, because he's immortal. So there is no usual death of the user escape at all. What does his Shikai exactly do? It causes complete hypnosis that allows Aizen to manipulate all of their senses and thus the perception of reality of his victims entirely to his advantage. It absolutely doesn't matter if his victims are aware that they are under his influence or not. 
As if it were not enough that he can influence the perceived reality of everyone else, he is also fused with a Hokyoku. In addition to the before mentioned immortality, he has gained as a result. The true ability of the Hokyoku is to absorb the desires of those around it and to manifest them into reality. So, unlike Tsukishima, blatant reality manipulation. And to top it off, Aizen Sosuke possesses a genius level intellect surpassed only by Urahara. And this intellect is also frequently underlined by how he manipulates everyone around him. Time and time again he absolutely mentally confuses, unsettles or shakes his opponents with his words alone. If you paid attention you might be able to see a clear pattern. His power is always based on his ability to directly bend the present or at least the perception of it to suit his purposes. Now about his motives. Eisen actually has two motives, one conscious and one unconscious. For the conscious one I would like to start with a quote from Eisen. From the beginning, no one has ever stood at the top. Neither you, nor me, nor the gods. But soon, that unattainable vacancy at the top will be filled. From now on, I alone will stand at the top. He's referring to the Soul King, who as we now know doesn't really reign in any way. His powerful body is simply used as a linchpin for all the Bleach Realms. Eisen doesn't talk about the future that much. Roughly speaking, his main goal is simple. To remove the puppet that Soul Society has placed on the throne and become the Soul King himself. But he shall actually rule. In the experiments, the Hogyoku, his long charade at Soul Society, all were means to that end. On to his unconscious desire. His second wish was to find equals, since his absolutely extraordinary abilities and power made him go through a lot of loneliness during his whole life. Fundamentally, there is no gigantic grand plan for the future like Yua has. No gigantic conceptual restructuring of the Bleach Realms. Essentially, he just wants to be the decider and not the one being decided upon and having equal friends. Poor little guy. You can see that Eisen's focus always lies on the near-term immediate change of his own current situation. Kubo also gives us no giant flashback of Eisen, no detailed origin story, no key event that made him what he is. He gives us the bare minimum so we can somewhat understand how he got to this point. That's it. As I said, of course, all three antagonists have elements of the other two aspects. Because all three have paths and goals for the future, but it's all about the focus and in Eisen's case it's always on the present. And last but not least, the most overpowered Bleach character, Yuha. As previously mentioned, he represents the future. For those who have read the manga, these completely overwhelming abilities and their connection to the future are probably obvious. Or maybe not, because you could write an encyclopedia with all his theoretical abilities. Since it is said that he absorbs not only the strength, but also the abilities of the persons he uses Auswählen on. But again, despite the diversity of his abilities, I want to focus on the core, because it is the main ability that puts special focus on the future factor. As a baby, Yua could not see, hear, cry or move, instead he had a very special gift. Everyone who touched him gained a small part of his soul. It healed all wounds and ailments of the receivers and enabled people to do things they were previously unable to do or gave them what they lacked. In exchange, receiving these gifts significantly shortened their lifespans. When they died after a foreseeable period of time and the soul fragments of the respective individuals returned to Yua, he gained not only his senses but also the strength and special abilities that had been imprinted upon the fragments of his soul which they had received. He does the same during the Blood War arc with his Sternritters. He gifts them a so-called Schrift, a letter to be exact, thus an ability, and retrieves it by using Auswählen later. In other words, he makes an investment in other individuals with massive short to medium term guaranteed return on investment. And even more generalized, he gives up something in the present so that he can gain much more in the future. Yua would have made a great investment banker in real life. A guaranteed return is something that even Warren Buffett cannot always realize. Now to his absolute main ability, his own shrift, A, the almighty. And what you see is what you get with this ability. The word almighty is not exaggerated here. The main thing it does is, well, see the future. More concretely, see all possible futures. And even if he's as unlucky as to somehow still be killed in one of the selected scenarios, he simply can rewrite that particular future so that he does not die. Isn't that convenient? And therefore, while Tsukishima can influence the present by changing the past, 
You are influence of the future, thus changing the present to adjust it to the outcome he desires. Next to his motives, everything he does, he does in order to reach a particular future for all worlds. His goal was a world with no fear. He wanted to merge Hueco Mundo, Soul Society and the present world so that life and death fused together as well, resulting in a reality without fear, without the fear of death to be exact. Thus, he was ready to drastically change the present. You could even say abandon the current form of the present, just to form his ideal future. See, neither Tsukishima nor Eisen had such a focus on a very specific future so different from the present. And to top it all off, Kubo shows us absolutely unequivocally in the final chapters of Bleach that these three characters make up three equivalent aspects of time. After Ichigo's new bunker is broken again by Yuha and Ichigo and Inoue are left defeated, Inoue unsuccessfully tries to repair Ichigo's bunker. She only succeeds when Tsukishima shows up and cuts Ichigo with Book of the End, changing his past to one in which his bunker has not been destroyed. By the way, why do Genjo and Tsukishima help him? Well, because they want to make up for a past event with Ichigo. Again, Tsukishima's motivation being based on past events is expressed here yet again. To the next point. When it comes to the final battle, one of the absolute key figures to victory is Aizen and his Kyoka Suigetsu. For it is Aizen who stops Yuha long enough with his illusions for Ichigo to arrive in time. This is the second time that Yuha shows no immunity or high resistance to Aizen's Kyoka Suigetsu. And guess where Aizen's motivation to stop Yuha comes from? Not a debt or a grudge he holds from the past, or grand plans he schemes for the future. It's the simple reason that he wants to destroy anybody trying to rule over him which you are about to do, in the present. To sum it up, besides the plot error, <clears throat> I mean the silver error, which has its origin in Yuha's own powers, the only other abilities that came close to doing anything against Yuha after he activated his almighty were those of Tsukishima and Aizen. They managed to do what not even the strongest Shinigamis with the most extraordinary hex abilities could do. I'm looking at you, Ichibei. I mean, what else could I say? Kubo has put some absolutely great hidden gems in the story. And it makes me a little sad to know that I actually noticed these subtleties much later after I finished the manga and reread it later. And that's it for today guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you liked the video I would be very happy if you leave a like. I'm just starting with YouTube and I would be very grateful for any support no matter how small. I really enjoy making these videos but it would give me extra motivation to see if you guys actually enjoy watching them too. Again. Thank you. Until next time. Peace out.